So this is the final project, the culmination of all the skills you've learned over the past over the past course of lessons. And there's no specific guidance on this lesson on how to do the final project. It's up to you to go back and apply the skills you've learned to get this to work. But in this video, we'll go through my process of developing the program to to do this egg incubator project. So your task in this project is to write a program that maintains the heaters at 37 degrees Celsius. It should maintain the temperature of heater one, pardon, at 31 degrees Celsius, or 37 degrees Celsius. And it should do that by constantly adjusting the heater depending on whether it's over or below the target temperature. And then whenever it's adjusting the temperature or as it's adjusting the temperature, it should turn the LED on to the power level of the heater. So if it's adjusting it up to, you know, if it's turning the, the heater up, it should be a brighter LED. If it's turning it down, it should be off or a lower LED. And then during that whole time, you need to save the temperatures and the, the heater one values, these power level values, to an array list so that you can print them out at the end and see how they compare, see how, how fast the, the temperature was able to respond to your control input and, and kind of analyze your data. So let's go over to Eclipse and look at how I would write this program. Okay, so here we are in Eclipse. And the very first thing that we need to do is import the libraries we're going to use. So we know that we're going to use JTC Lab to control the temperature control lab. And we know that we're going to use ArrayList to store the values of the heaters, the heater power, and the temperatures. So we'll import ArrayList. Now the next thing we need to do is write all of the variables we're going to use throughout the project. So in, in programming in general, it's a good idea to use constant variables for things that you want to be able to change as you're changing your program. So for instance, we have a target temperature of 37 degrees, but what if later we need to change that? What if we want to have a different target temperature for a different kind of egg other than a chicken egg? rather than changing that number 37 throughout our whole program we can just change this variable at the very top and then since we use that variable throughout the program it will automatically change so one of the constants that we need as I just mentioned is the target temperature so I'm gonna write a static double and then it's good to write constant variables in all capitals And I'll set that to 37. And then next I'm going to set variables for the heater initial temperature that we initialize it to to heat up and the heater low temperature for when we want it to drop. So I'm going to say static double heater initial. And this is the power level for when we want the heater to heat up. And let's say that that's full power. And we'll do the same thing for heater low. And for now, let's just say that that's turning it all the way off. And you could experiment with different values. You could see how good your, your program is at maintaining a temperature. If rather than ramping it all the way up to 100, you ramp it up to only 80 and you drop it down to only 20. And maybe that's a bit more of a constant level maintaining those temperatures. And then the next thing we're going to do is the program asked us to check the temperatures every one second. So we're going to make a, a constant variable. And this way, if in the future we want to test it, sampling the, the temperatures every two seconds or every half second, we can easily change that up here. But we're going to start out waiting every one second. And the last thing we're going to do is make make a constant variable for the duration. So the project asked us to make a program that 
runs for one second and then after one or sorry that runs for for 10 minutes checking every one second and then after 10 minutes we can analyze the data so the duration is going to be 10 minutes there we go so those are all of our constant variables now let's move on to writing the actual code first let's write two array lists because we know we need to store two things the temperatures and the heater power values so let's write two double array lists to store those two things Okay, there we have our two array lists. Now, the next thing we want to do is power on our heater to the power, the initial power level that it's going to heat up to. Because it's going to start off in its off position and it's going to heat up from that to its initial level. So, let's do that. We're going to need to create a JTC Lab object. So, up here, above our array list, let's write JTC Lab. And then down here, we can use that to power on our heater. Now, what we're actually going to end up doing is, is we're going to be looping and we're going to change the heater level from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. So first, I'm going to write a variable that just represents the current heater level. And I'm going to initialize it to heater low because when we turn on the heaters they're not they're gonna start on the off position we don't need to ramp them up all the way yet and then down here down here we can write power on our heater so we do that with my lab q1 heater level and that will turn on our heater and it'll just turn on our heater to zero because heater low is set to zero right now okay now we have to we have to loop for 10 minutes and so to know how long to know how many iterations that's going to be let's write a, a simple equation that will calculate how many times we have to iterate if we're gonna wait every one second and loop for 10 minutes, how many times we have to do that before we hit 10 minutes. So we're going to store that in a variable that we call iterations. And this variable is, it's going to take the duration, the number of minutes that we want this to last for, and multiply it by 60 to find out how many seconds it's going to last for, and then divide it by the wait time to find out how many iterations, how many of these wait times fit in the total duration. So in Java code, that looks like this. And then because this is an integer, and these are double values we're dealing with, we need to cast it to int and that just converts this double value to an int and if it's somewhere in between two integers it'll drop it it'll round it down okay next let's print out that we're heating up the two heaters so I'm gonna add a print statement right here and I said two heaters but I meant one heater because in this final project we only need to heat up heater one
Now let's test this. Before we test it, let's just add a close statement to close our heater down at the end. And let's test and see what we've got so far. If we click go, oh, it says we have errors. Oh, I forgot a semicolon here. Let's add that semicolon. Now let's click execute. And we'll see that it connects and it says that it's heating to target temperature. But then it'll immediately disconnect because we don't actually have it checking the temperatures for 10 minutes. So the next thing we need to do is write a for loop. Let's write a for loop. And we're going to start that for loop at 0, for int i equals 0. And we're going to go until we hit the number of iterations that we calculated we need to do right here. Now inside this for loop, the first thing we need to do is add the two things. We need to add the heater level and the temperatures to our array list. So we can do that by using the add method for each of these array lists. And then right here, I'm going to make a variable for the temperature just to simplify things a little bit. And then I can add that variable to our array list of temperatures. And then we need to do the same thing for the power level. And remember, we already have a, a variable for the heater level. So we can paste that in there. And now every iteration, it will keep recording in these array lists the temperature and the heater levels. Now the next thing we need to do, remember, is if we're below the target temperature, we need to turn the heaters up. And if we're above the, the target temperature or equal to it, we need to turn the heaters down. So let's write an if statement to do that. Now remember the condition that we're checking is whether or not the temperature is below the target temperature. And remember our target temperature is the name of a constant variable up here. Oh, I actually named it target temp. And so it'll constantly check whether we're below whatever I set this variable to, in this case 37. And if it is below it, we need to turn that heater so we're going to change this heater level variable to that heater initial level. And you know what? I'm not liking this heater initial variable name very much because it's kind of confusing to me. So I'm going to change that to heater max. That makes more sense as our maximum heater value. And then I'll change where I used that earlier. Okay, so we'll set that to heater max. And then if we're not below, if we're equal to or greater than the target temperature, then we don't need to keep heating up. And so we'll set the heater level to heater low. Now these are just changing the variable. So after that if statement, we need to actually change the, the heater level, not just the variable, but the heater level on the temperature control lab. So we'll do that with the Q1 method. And we'll send it the value of that variable heater level. And then we also need to change the LED so that it matches the level of the heater. So we can do that with mylab.led. 
and then pass it in the level of the heater. Okay, so we're getting pretty close here. Let's review what we've done so far. So far, we, we've created some ArrayList, and we start the, the lab heating up here, and we start looping for the number of iterations that we need to do. And each time we loop, we check if we're below or above the target temperature. If we're below, then we set the heater to the maximum. If we're above, we set the heater to its low value. And that way, we'll kind of balance out and we'll hopefully hit this sort of equilibrium where we're maintaining a constant temperature as close as we can get. The next thing we need to do is we only want to check every second. So let's add a wait statement so that we're not constantly checking. And then we're going to sleep for the amount of wait time. So wait time is number of seconds. But remember, the sleep method takes number of milliseconds as an argument. And then because this right here is a double, we're going to need to cast this whole thing to a long because this thread.sleep takes a long data type as an argument. Okay, there we go. And then after this, of course, we'll need to add the catch. Okay, so that whole statement will wait for the number of seconds that we told it to wait. In this case, we told it to wait for one second. And then after this whole thing, after we've looped that many times, outside of our loop, we need to disconnect from the lab. So we do that with mylab.close. Oh, we already had one right there. How convenient. And then after that, we want to print out the temperatures and the heater levels. So let's add two print statements that print out both of these array lists up here. And there we go. That should run the whole program as we expected. But just to test it, we don't have to test it for the full 10 minutes. We can only test it for, let's say, one minute if we want to. And we can do that by changing the duration variable up here. So I'm going to run this, and I'll jump ahead to once it's executed, and we can look at how it worked. Okay, so it's been a minute. It's actually been a bit more than a minute because depending on the speed of your computer and USB connection some of this stuff might might lag a little bit behind but it's been a little over a minute and you can see all these values that have printed out of course if we look at it we'll see that the temperature starts well below 37 degrees and so the heater stays on at 100 about 100 power but as we continue moving on we'll see that the heater quickly heats up and once it hits 37 degrees the heater turns off and it, it keeps continues heating up and until it reaches about 42, 43 degrees. And then it starts dropping back down slowly. And then it drops right here. It starts dropping below 37 degrees. And these don't quite line up, but around the same time, you can see that the heater kicks back on at 100. And then it kicks off and kicks back on. And you could, you could take the, all of these numbers and throw them into Excel and graph them. And you could see a very nice graph showing the heater kicking on and kicking off and the temperatures responding. And as a matter of fact, you could write that into your program if you included a graphing library into your program. You'd be able to see all of these things happening as a graph bit of data. So there you go. That is a guide to completing the final project. Feel free to mess around with it. And also, if you have any comments, leave them in the video below and we'll try to answer them or hopefully someone else has a good answer. But I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something and enjoy your programming.